Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Psychical Research Science Society's February 4th meeting. Today, we are so honored to have psychic medium, paranormal investigator, and spirit photographer, Joe Giaquinto. Joe is a psychic medium and ghost investigator. He has experience in paranormal phenomena for over 40 years. Joe's professional memberships have included the American Society for Psychical Research, the Association of Trans Communication, Forever Family Foundation, Hampton Bay's Historical Society, First Parish Church, and the Ghost Hunters of Long Island. Joe collaborated with author and historian Carrie Ann Flanagan Broski on several book projects about Long Island ghosts. He has appeared on numerous cable TV and radio shows and in online and print newspapers. Joe currently uses his intuitive gifts for group and private readings and for corroborating paranormal evidence recordings during field investigation. He presents lectures and workshops for private organizations, historic societies, public libraries, his holistic learning centers, and private businesses. You can visit Joe at his website at joemediumpi.com. Thank you, Joe, for joining us today for our purser meeting for February. Um, as you know, I, I always start off with questions, and I know the first thing I always want to know is how did you get involved in the study of paranormal investigation and working with spirit as a psychic medium? Well, I was always, uh, I guess I was always a strange kid. I never really fit in, and um, I always just to see things differently than other people. And in 1980, I got out of college. I was in um, upstate New York. I was in uh, the area of Plattsburgh. And I had the fortune or misfortune of moving into a haunted boarding house when I was up there working. And in two weeks, I got chased out by a ghost. And I was very interested in the subject. I, I realized I had some sensitivity to this. And of course, back in the 80s, there were a lot of movies like, like Poltergeist to come out. So there were a lot of... There were a lot of TV shows and movies about ghosts and the paranormal. So I was very interested in it. And I started doing investigations with another partner. And then um, I moved to um, uh, California in 1991. And when I returned in 2003, uh, Carrie Ann Flanagan Broski, who's a local historian in Huntington and an author of several books, uh, she had um, was doing a Halloween lecture. And I walked in to this lecture and she immediately came up and said, you want to help me write my first book on ghosts? I said, sure. And then the next day, she said, when she went home, she said to her husband, Carl, she said, uh, I just agreed to help collaborate this book project with a guy. I don't even know who he is. Could be a, could be a ax murderer or something. So she made me meet her the next day at the coffee shop and say, is your head going to turn around 180 degrees like in The Exorcist? I said, trust me, it's not going to do that. That'd be very painful anyway. <laughs> so we met and I helped her as the, as a ghost investigator, paranormal investigator for the first book in uh, 2006. And then we did a second book in 2008. And what happened was, as I did these investigations there at these beautiful mansions like um, Sagamore Hill, Sagatose Manor, where Teddy Roosevelt was, um, George Washington, the Revolutionary War, the Cult Perspiring, all these beautiful places on Long Island. I started picking up things I had no knowledge of. And um, people started saying, asking me if I was intuitive or a psychic or a medium. And we were on a, we were on a uh, little TV shoot for Channel 55 here. Uh, on a Halloween promo, and they asked the reporter, asked Carrie Ann what Joe was, and she's, he said, she said, well, I think he's one level below a, a psychic. So I said, oh, that doesn't sound very flattering. So I went to Google, and I looked up all the phenomena that I did, and they said, guess what? You're a medium, a psychic medium. I had all the different types of mediumship, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairpalience, Clear, sent, um, clear um, audience, clear voice, all of them. And I was, after I met Carrie Ann, I started having a lot of phenomena happening around me. So I realized I had to really learn more about this and really tune in and find out how I could develop these abilities. And eventually, in the second book, people started, we go and interview people at these various properties for the book. 
And the people started asking me, do you do readings? And so I said, what's that? So um, evidently I was doing readings without knowing I was doing them. Um, and uh, I started working on those and then eventually I picked up clients and started doing groups and events. And, and that's how I got to where I am today. But now when I go into a, um, an, a haunted house, I go in as a medium. I don't go in as Joe G, the Ghostbuster. And, um, you know, I, I go in there and they don't tell me anything about the property, the hauntings, the phenomena. I go in there and I see what I pick up. Then they they validate whether I'm right or wrong on different things based on the interview with the property owners after. So find out um, if I have a lot of hits, you know, and, and it works out, worked out really well. So I'm very excited to be able to help people not only in the investigations, but also people, mainly people with their life and their loved ones who have transitioned uh, to the other side. Well, speaking of these investigations, um, can you describe an experience you've had in connecting with spirit and like maybe any incidents of phenomena you've witnessed? Sure, sure. Um, well, let's see. Um, one, one in particular was uh, this beautiful uh, Victorian mansion in Huntington, and the owner, uh, the owners, they had a daughter. She was three years old, and uh, they had moved from Manhattan, New York City, to Long Island. And um, they were having disturbances in the house, and it basically was frightening the daughter. So I brought my group in there, and we had a lot of the classic haunting phenomena. We heard sounds, we felt things in different rooms. There were cold and hot spots. The main, uh, the main event that we were concerned about was that the daughter was not sleeping. She was crying at, at night. She was screaming. She was very frightened. So what I did, uh, most of my investigations, what I do now is we go in and after we assess the situation, uh, we'll do a message circle, spiritual message circle, and we'll have a talk with the spirits and see what the deal is, what's the, what's the issue. So in that case, um, we found out that there was a boy that we believe died in a fire in the house in the beginning, and he was appearing to the girl in her room. And so we asked, we told the boy that he has to stop appearing like he is because he's frightening her. And she was actually crying. We heard her upstairs. She was crying in the bedroom when we started the circle. As soon as we connected with the boy, she stopped crying and went to sleep. It was so radical that it was, it was, there was no coincidence to it. And then two weeks later, I got a very nice letter from uh, the wife that said she wanted to thank us for our work. And she said that um, her daughter, Lola, came up to her and said, Mommy, where did all the ghosts go? So it was a very happy ending. We have a lot of stories like that. But it, as far as your question about the phenomena, um, we have a lot of... Uh, the things you might see on a, on a ghost TV show, um, we do. My specialty is spirit photography and uh, recordings of spirits' voices, uh, EVPs or electronic voice phenomena. So we'll talk about that. I have a, a couple of samples to show you. Now, uh, I lost when, your sound. Oh, sorry, there you, are. there you go. When you discovered that you were connecting to the spirit world, what can you give us examples of like um, how you connect, like what, what steps you take to connect or because a lot of people do it differently and, and that's mm -hmm. fine. But in your experiences, what right. have you discovered? And can you give examples of any of that connection to spirit? Sure. Um, well, the, I, when I connect, um, I asked Bill Collar, who's a Scottish medium. He's very, he's been doing the work for 50 years. Really, he, we've gone to his workshop. He's a great, great mentor of mine. He's uh, also uh, friends with Richard Scholler and um, Sharon Shugas. I don't know if you know them, but um, I asked him, Bill, I said, what do you have to do to get to do mediumship? What do you have to prep? Do you have to meditate for three hours? Do you have to fast for two days? Do you have to pray? Do you have to do sage or holy word? What do you do? He says, just do it. I mean, we all have different ways of connecting. We have different specialties. We have different favorite things. I feel that if you like something, you get better at it. 
But he said you should challenge yourself. Don't do the stuff that's easy. Do the stuff that's challenging. For, so, because it's all about connecting to the energy of the spirit. The whole universe is all about energy, uh, electrons, atomic particles. S spirits see the world as an energy structures. They're here, but they're in a different plane. They're in an energy state. So, to connect to them for myself, um, I do two very big things. One thing is I set the boundaries of how I want to communicate with them. So I, I set sacred space. I don't want to talk to something dark or evil or anything. And the, the spirit world really is populated by all the moms and dads and their moms and dads who passed. You watch TV or Hollywood, you think every everybody that dies becomes a, zo a, a zombie or a demon. But the reality is they're just people on the other side. They might be angry. They might be sad. They might be happy. They might be at different levels, but they're all people. So one thing I do is set the boundaries of how I want to communicate with love and light. And then the other thing I do is I tell them how I want to communicate, what types of communication I want to do. Because if you're a visual person and you see symbols and things with your clairvoyance, your third eye, and they're an audio person, then you may not connect. Or if their energy is a certain way or it's not that strong, you may have trouble connecting. Uh, one thing I do use is I have spirit guides, and one of my favorite spirit guides, uh, her name, I call her Melissa, um, is how we identify her. And um, Melissa is my gatekeeper during events, sometimes readings. If I have trouble connecting to a spirit, I'll ask her to ask the spirit what the answer, yes or no, or whatever information. And generally, it works pretty good. So, um, yeah, so I think my techniques uh, are, are to, I like my clear audience, my clear voice, and my clear sentience. I really like all of them. Thank you for sharing that. That's it, such a beautiful way to explain it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you mentioned you have a group. And unfortunately, what you do, a lot of people question. So we have to prove yes. it in other ways. So you that's mentioned right. that you um, get checked by this group that's yeah. with you. So what tools, equipment, how do you, what do you use to help prove what you are doing in your mediumship is legit? And how do you prove the existence of these spirits? Good. That's a really good question. And it's something that people always ask. Um, I was telling you the story about me taking the Latin test. I was in school. I'll just share it just briefly. It's part of the answer. Um, so I was in school. When I was in high school, I was terrible in Latin. When Sister Eugene was very patient with all of us. And um, we had to take a final test. We had to translate a scroll from Latin. And I thought I was going to fail miserably. No one would even sit with me. We were able to team up, up with other students and do like a collaborative test final exam. So nobody wanted to sit with me. So I said, all right, let's do the best. So I read through the whole thing. I got the best translation of the message I could. And I got a 96. And everyone else in the class had failed the test. And I said, Sister Eugene, how could I pass this test? And she said, well, she said, well, everybody was stuck on the first paragraph arguing over whether it was the current or past tense or the object or the adjective. You just read the whole thing and got the general message of the scroll, which was what the purpose of the test was. And I've used that same thing in trying to establish proof of life after death, the physical death, because um, we get signs and messages all the time. And for me, when I get messages that have meaning and are on, on cue, so if I ask a question and I get a response, to me, that's intelligent communication. So that's one way I prove it. The other way is I think... Um, I think God would not have our life just just end after physical death. I mean, if you look at the, you look up in the night sky in a clear night, you see billions and billions of stars. I, I know that movie. One of my favorite movies is the movie Contact with Jodie Foster. Is it Jodie Foster? Yeah. And it's just a beautiful movie about how huge the universe is and how it's so empty, and yet we're all on this little blue globe. And I, I remember meeting, I was able to listen to William Shatner, Captain Kirk, talk about his experience going into, into space. And I remember one of the things he said at the end of his talk with us, um, he said, 
I learned that outside of this earth, everything is blackness and death. And he said, well, the only thing that's kept us alive is we've all learned to love each other rather than kill each other. And so, like I said, I, I believe in God. I'm a, I'm a spiritualist. I'm also a Catholic. Um, and I, I believe that there's, there's more. It's just common. It's, to me, it makes common sense that you can't have all this and to be nothing else. Uh, the other one, just another brief one, too. Um, because of the proof I get from my investigations and my readings that get validated, that's another sign, a big sign of continuation after death, that people are still alive and well, they're just back in their natural spirit form. May I give you an example specific? So one of my friends and colleagues, uh, her name is Jeannie. And in one September, several years ago, she had lost her mom. And what I didn't know was that she had told her mom she was going to give her, when she was in the hospice, she was going to give her a secret word. And she said that Joe, if my friend Joe, the medium, gets the secret word, you'll know I'm okay on the other side. I'm alive. And she also, when she was on meds and sort of in a medication-induced coma, when her daughters would talk to her in the hospital bed, um, she would... Um, she would wink at them to let them know, you know, I'm, I'm listening. I can't respond, but I hear you. Well, fast forward to this event. We're going to actually investigate a haunted nursing home, which was actually in business. It wasn't an abandoned property like a Sandy shows. There were residents there. So uh, we were in the parking lot and I was giving everybody the, uh, you know, the, the orientation. Don't go into the rooms. Don't look like the men in black on the movie, you know. Uh, don't scare people with video cameras. Just be discreet. Well, Jeannie was standing right next to me, and I'd asked her to come to the event to get out because she was kind of depressed about losing her mom. You know. And earlier in the day, I had gone to the general store, Penny Candy Shop in uh, St. James, Long Island, and I bought a bunch of candy for the group. I had it in a brown paper bag. Now, I love candy. I love chocolate. But there's one thing I didn't have in there. And... It, I had saltwater taffy, lollipops, um, cinnamon stick, you know, the whole, the candy canes, everything. So here we are in the parking lot. It's dark. The surveillance lights are on in the parking lot. We're about to go into the nursing home, start our investigation. Jeannie's right here. And I said, um, well, group, and I look in the bag and I say, I've got some goodies for you. I got some candy for you here before we start. Cool treat. I said, we've got, and I look in the bag, and I could, my mind went completely blank. I couldn't think of one description of any kind of candy in the bag. I couldn't say lollipop, saltwater taffy, anything. I said, the one thing that was not in the bag, I said, we have licorice. And I look at Jeannie, she says, what? And I said, is that the secret word from your mom? And she says, it is. And all the lights in the parking lot, the surveillance, I start winking on and off. And I said, your mom's winking at you to let you know that she's okay. And um, that was, it's just a great, it's just a beautiful story. And, and Jeannie, after that, we had other phenomena from her mom, Teresa, after that. But to me, that was, that just took the cake, you know, that one. Thank you for sharing that. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, b before I, I ask you to talk about the photography and, and voice stuff, um, I need to mm -hmm. ask, what do you believe happens to these spirits that you help when you go into these investigations? What, Where do they go? Because, uh, you know, everybody has Ghostbuster movie in their head. They go, in, you know, yeah. where yeah, yeah. do you move these spirits? What, what happens to them? Well, again, I, I think that the spiritual plane, heaven is is here. Um, it's a different type of a universe. Spirits, they don't have to get on JetBlue if they want to go from New York to California. They, you know what I mean? People say, you know, can you do, I do phone readings with people all over the place. And I did a phone reading for a lady down in, I don't know, Brazil or something. I've done people in Florida, California. And I say, you know, when you start doing a reading, the spirits are summoned. They come to you at the speed of thought. They're here and they connect with you. So, um, I think that, uh, I'm sorry, ask the question again. I was going off on a, so. Mainly what I was sorry. just wondering was, where do you think they go? 
when you go in yeah where they go um yeah. all right so yeah all right thank you i was i did guys i didn't get too much sleep last night i was telling angela my computer crashed i had to buy a new computer and install everything all, all night long so we got up and running today but anyway um yeah so they really they're in an energy universe so they're here but they're they see an energy structure so that's why like we were in this house in uh, huntington where the the father actually walked through two of my my members in my group they felt him walk through their body um, so they're again they're here now where do they go well it depends i don't subscribe to this idea that spirits are stuck and they get they can't move um i make a distinction between ghosts and spirits where where ghosts are more of a place-centered sort of a residual energy, like an imprint, where spirits are like us. They're people, they move around. And um, so the uh, spirits, they uh, are able to um, come and go as they will. Some will stay close to the physical and communicate with us. Uh, there was a woman who lost her father. And the father... Um, for six years, communicated with his daughter by flashing streetlights whenever she would say, Dad, how do you, you hear? And uh, the mother went off to heaven together, and the daughter never heard from them again. So, reason to stay close to physical. If they're grieving, maybe they didn't have closure, they left the world too traumatically. Maybe they have things to say, they have a message, maybe they want to tell tell the spouse where the, the key to the safe with the million dollars is hidden, you know, whatever the reason. So, but that's, uh, so I do think they, 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 there is a heaven. I think there's also a purgatory and a hell. Um, I think when people are do bad things during their life, they see their Akashic records after they pass, they, they see what they did that was bad. And there's a period where they have to really reconcile that guilt and that horror. And sometimes that becomes their hell. So they're kind of now they come back, they want to apologize during a reading. Maybe the family member that was abused, for example, doesn't want to hear about it. So it may take years, may take a long time for them to eventually move on to the rest of the life. Okay. I hope that answers your question. No, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's talk about your spirit photography and your spirit voice work. And and again, sure. go to Joe's website at joemediumpi.com. He shows some examples too there, but let's let's hear what you have to see or should see what you have to talk about. <laughs> sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Well, first, uh, I'll show three. And I, again, I have a bunch of stuff I queued up, but I'll just play or show a couple of things just for the time. Um, so we were at William Sidney Mount's house several times. Now, he's a, a painter and inventor. He was in the 1800s. Uh, he's a very famous uh, individual. And um, we have a big connection with him, not only for Carrion's book, his historical ghost books, but also because he just is a cool guy. And um, he follows us around. And uh, when we first went to his house in Stony Brook, um, we had, I didn't know anything about him. Carrie Ann had done all the research. She's a historian. And, uh, she said, you know, what are you getting from William? What, what, and I have to call him Mr. Mount, by the way, he says, don't you can't call him William. I said, Mr. Mount. So Mr. Mount, uh, I he says, well, you want me to talk to him? This is early in my mediumship work too, you know? I said, sure. She said, you can talk to him. I said, sure. Let me see what he says. I'll read you verbatim what he says. So I, I did it. I wrote it down and I emailed it to her. And she said to me, I just looked in his journals because he kept journals. He used to write about his experiences, how he painted the, the, the politics of the time. And she says, your, your entry matches exactly how he would write in his journal. So I put together, I found that original email from like 2006 and I put it to some, a voice. See, would you, and, and his picture, a portrait. You want to hear it? See how it sounds? Okay, let me see. This will be a good test for our system here. Let's see. I think this is it here. The sound, share sound. Okay, do you see that? Okay, so you see a, a black screen, right? Okay, good. Right, here we go. Joseph, 
Why did your legion leave the property so quickly after the hawks appeared? We had really wanted you to stay with a good heart. Kerryang is all despondent about your little episode with the door opening and frustrated about the apparent problem with and lack of respect for my house. This will be a frightful experience for her to quote my commentary and persuade others to my cause. Like you, it will be evident in the long term, but not now. What do you think? Oh, amazing, amazing. Yeah. So yeah, explain, and, can you explain what the voice is? Because people are like- Sure, sure. Yeah, so I used a, I went online. I have a, a, a an app that lets you put a voice to text. So I, I, I got an English speaking, an old English speaking voice narrator to just read it because I thought it'd be more effective to hear how he would talk. But obviously that's not him talking. It's just the word, but the words are his words. And uh, it's interesting because he, he was a spiritualist until the end when someone talked him out of it and said it was all a scam and everything. Then when he passed, he realized that was a mistake. On his deathbed, he realized he, he was right all along. And so on the other side, his mission now, and what you were asking about before, why do spirits do, do they stay or go? He is, we are helping him convey that message in his life and his work and his artwork. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank you. All right. Um, let me see. Now, would you like to see some art, spirit photography? Absolutely. Please share. Okay. So uh, spirit photography, one day I got a picture, and I'm going to show you this picture at a cemetery in uh, Bethpage State Park. And I, being a medium, I realized that you know, if spirits can send me a picture of somebody on the other side or some image, some symbolism, why can't they do it in my house? So I got some old mirrored surfaces and some old glass bottles, like depression glass bottle with beautiful reflective glass and shapes and shadows. And I started taking pictures with my camera and I would say to the spirits, okay, I'm here. Um, give me a message. Just give me a face. Give me a, uh, an image. Give me a text message. And they did. And that became my spirit art. What I started doing was taking these images and cleaning them up, getting rid of the noise, just like I do with an uh, audio recording of a spirit voice. And I started making them little art pieces to basically let the spirit share their art with the world after the death. So that's, that's what I'm doing with it. So let me see if I could get a couple of images for you. So a few of these will be ghost, classic ghost pictures. And then some of them will be spirit photos that I've recorded. Oh, here we go. I found it. Okay, so you can see the cemetery. All right? And, okay, and what happened to it? Let me try it again. Let's see. Okay. All right, so um, there it is. And then, Now, do you all see that, uh, the trees and the headstones in the background? Okay. All right. So I took this one picture and I said, something was like drawing me over to the right corner. Do you see this? You see this like a little oval, like it looks like the trees bent in a shape of a locket and there's something with white in it there? Yes. Yes. It's an, a Civil War soldier or a silver man from the Civil War period standing there. You could see his white beard. Now, one thing the spirits do with my photos is they, they always colorize the face where like the, the flesh tone or the lips or something. So you could see there's a little pink above his beard, which would be his face. And you could see he's got his hand is at his side and he's holding a hat. He looks, you could see his black pants. He looks like he's wearing some sort of waistcoat. Now, obviously this is, this was created by matrixing or pareidolia using the leaves and the trees and the shadow to make this appearance. But it's definitely a figure standing there. Right? So that's this funny because we went to Quaker Cemetery last year, which isn't a Civil War cemetery. And I got to meet uh, the Quaker who runs the meeting house there that they reopened. They started doing service there again. And he said that there was a historian actually for the service that morning from that area. And he says, there actually was a Civil War soldier, the only one that was buried there. So maybe that's him just saying hello, say, hey, I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm here, but I'm, I'm, I'm not with this time period. So That's awesome. Now, this is a house in Huntington. 
Um, it's the Wanzer family. They've lived there for generations. And Ellison, who is the, I guess he was the great grandfather, maybe, he passed. And I was taking pictures of the house. Notice it's winter, there's snow on the ground. And you see that window on the left side has sort of a greenish look to it in the reflection. Well, there's a man dressed in a, a maybe a white shirt. He's kind of bent over looking in as if he's peeking in the window like this. He also in front of him looks like, like an antenna, like an old style aerial. And notice it behind him. If this is a reflection of the outside, notice behind him, it's grass, there's no snow. And that's him. We found an old family photo. He's even wearing the hat. And uh, he was a sailor, a merchant marine, and I guess he was wearing his Sunday best there on the left side. I don't know if you could see that, but. Yes, thank you. Now, um, this is an orb. This fella here on the right bottom corner, that's Caesar. Caesar loves photographing orbs, and orbs are spiritual markers. They're basically the spirit. They're just showing up as a light anomaly, and they move around. You can see them with your own eye. Now. I wanted to get a picture of Caesar getting a picture of an orb. So the spirits put an orb right there for us. So that's, again, that's a, that's a sign of intelligent communication because there's no, no other orbs in the whole photo. There's one right in front of his camera. That's awesome. I love this house. This was built in 1835, I think. Pretty old house. Kind of reminds you of something you'd see on one of those movies, you know, like the Adams Family or the Munsters or something. But this is a gorgeous house. It's since been redone and restored to its original splendor. Uh, this is in Huntington. Now, these two ladies here, if you notice, they were in my group that day. You notice that the picture is pretty clear, but the Christmas tree lights are moving. You saw that, right? Yep. So uh, that's kind of odd. And so the tree was not shaking. Uh, so um, they were doing that. They were playing with that light. But there's something else we found in this house. Anybody use, you, you see it? Mm -hmm. Top right corner. Face of a woman. And some people say they see George Washington down below in this globe, this round orb here. Now this I took, uh, this is year before, uh, we were, I took my mom, we went up, she's an artist, and we went to Searsport, Maine. It's up Belfast, up way up north. And it's a beautiful, this is the Searsport, uh, the home port inn. And they had a, a story that there was a woman, an old woman that haunts the, the floor in that room, in that side of the building. And I got this image up there. Looks like a figure of a woman in a dress, right? Upstairs there in that left top window. Now, this is in Sabo. This is actually right across the street from where we live. Uh, it's at the Maritime Museum. And every year, the, um, the Navy SEALs there, they do a boat burning. They take an old boat, they burn it down. And it's like, sort of like, I guess, uh, like a ceremonial thing, you know, for the new recruits. Well, uh, there was a kid in high school that shot this photo. And he was amazed to see a seaman from an old ship on the left side coming out of the smoke, a face of a seaman. You could see his beret, you could see his hair, uh, his neck, you could see his facial structure. Just beautiful, just a beautiful photo. And I'm big into, you know, staying in the light. And in this next photo, this was during a snowstorm. We were going to uh, this house in Manorville where um, this girl, Becca, had uh, perished when she was tragically, uh, she fell, on, a, a horse fell on top of her during a horse equestrian event that she was doing. She was on her way to the Olympics. Becca was only, I think, 22 years old. Well, she haunts her family big time. We, I did a group reading for about 15 people on this event, and it was blizzarding out, just a freak snowstorm. So um, nobody could get there except a couple of people from my group and, of course, all the family members. So here we are. We're looking down this road. Monica's driving this car. 
And she's, it looks like there's no house lights, nothing. All you see at the very end, it looks almost like a manger or a crutch down at the end of the street. Most like a, like with baby Jesus would be in there. And above that is hovering an angel. You see the angel? It's an orb, but it's shaped like an angel. And interestingly, the foundation that the Ride for Becca Foundation they use to fundraise for kids that want to learn to how to do the show jumping and the equestrian events, um, they have an angel riding a horse as its uh, as its logo. So those are a few samples there. That was awesome. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh I, I'm sorry. Let me just show you. Do I have a, min a minute? Oh, yeah. Or so? Yeah, sure. Let me, I forgot to show you um, a couple of my spirit photos too. Uh, are we back? Do you see it again? Okay. Okay. This is one of my spirit photos. This was actually taken in my, in my house. And it's, it looks very Egyptian. It's got this beautiful gold color, you know. It, this is off a glass bottle, one of my old glass bottles. Now, it looks like there's a woman on the left side that she looks like she's praying. Her head is bowed. She has her hands up to her face. But I want to call your attention to, the, of course, this eye that's staring at us. Now, it's, it's, it looks very, like I said, to me, it looks like very ancient, very like something very mystical. But if you notice on each side of this eye, there's the letter I. There's a lower uppercase I on each side in white. See it? To make sure I knew it was the letter I, not only did they put the upper and lower uh, horizontal bars on the letter I, but they also put a dot above it. So it's an I, an I, and then a, a, an I in the middle, the third I, see? So they're saying that the message I'm getting from that was that you have two eyes for seeing and you have a third eye for you know, more spiritual vision. Now, this is a dog. This is Teddy. Uh, Teddy, unfortunately, passed some years ago. But he was deciding he was going to join our holiday table. He wanted some of the, I guess he wanted the apple pie before anyone else got it, or maybe the turkey. Who knows what it was? Well, I saw this blue reflection on the seat cover behind him. I said, that looks like something there. It looks like a little animal friend. It looks like a cat. So I took a photograph of it. See the cat? Now, it's not a perfect rendition of a cat. You could see a tail, maybe ears, a nose, and maybe eyes. Interestingly, there's there's a little reflection on the cover that shows part of his paw. So I took a, a screenshot of a cat paw, and you could see that it pretty much matches. It's missing. There are the, the other two uh, paw marks, but they're very dim. So they, they wanted me to know that Teddy had a, a cat friend on the other side. And this one is a, this is a tiny image I got of one of my bottles. <clears throat> that house you saw, the one that looked really gothic. Um, I got the honor to walk through the house with a minister who um, blessed the house and cleared the spirits to move on. There was a spirit of a woman that we think had been abused and maybe had been murdered or commit suicide in the house. And during one of my recordings, I got a voice from a young woman who said, Lord, I am free during the walk around. But this, the priest was a, he was a, a very nice man. And when I went home, I took this picture on one of my bottles doing some spirit photography and they gave me an image of the same guy. This is what, this was the priest, the pastor that, um, that walked with me. This is, this was on a reflective bottle in my room after the event. Let's have any more there. Okay. And my dad, uh, also gave me a text message spelled dad d-a-d um one this was actually i got this image on his birthday weekend of his birthday had he been alive all right all right that's, that was beautiful that, thank you for sharing those with us thank you you're welcome um so i just have um one more if you want to play i'll play an evp sure okay and then i'll conclude on that um Let's see if I can. I think this is it. Uh, 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna go up here. All right. Um, so we use something called a spirit box, and a spirit box is um, it's a it's a recording device. It's basically an AM FM radio, the one I use that's been modified so that the, the it never stops at one station. It just keeps going from station. You know, when you hit the scan button, trying to find a favorite song, this one will just keep scanning what the spirits do in a branch of science called ITC, which is intertrans communication. Tom and Lisa Butler um, from the American Association of EVPs. Uh, he, Tom is fond of saying that spirits monkey around with high-tech devices to help help them give messages to us. So the, the spirit box or the ghost box is a radio that's been hacked in, inside so that it will just scan. And the spirits will monkey with the scanner to stop it at different places. So for example, let's say I say the spirit's what is heaven like, which is actually a question I asked. Um, and the spirits will stop a guy telling us that the weather tomorrow is going to be beautiful on the radio. So they'll stop at the word beautiful. So I say, spirits, how is the weather like? And you'll get the answer, beautiful, come over the radio. So this is a, this is a spirit box recording at Sag Harbor Old Burying Ground Cemetery. And I have one other after this follows the play. That, so this is in Stony Brook. There were graves of Annabel, Anthony Hannibal Clapp, the man named Cain, buried there. Uh, they were friends. They were former slaves of the Hawk and Mount family. And William Sidney Mount, who I spoke about, was very fond of them. He used to visit the graves. That's the uh, that's the Wehrless Church, which is right next to the cemetery. It's not part of the, the cemetery, but um, this is where we had parked. This was actually done during COVID. When everything was shut down, we actually brought a tent with us so we could isolate <laughs> from everybody. We had one guy show up in a delivery truck to deliver some food to the to the church, and he saw us. He said, "What are those guys doing here? <laughs> Looked like we had a tent out in the Sahara Desert somewhere." It was the funniest thing. Okay, here we go. Are there anyone from the British from when this was a fort? Yes, well. Is there anyone here from the British soldiers? Good hi. Was anyone hung in this cemetery? Two people were. Yeah, that's right. The, the British were on this side of the road. Check. The British were over here in this cemetery. This is the port over here. This is really interesting. I'm having a, an event right now. It's, uh, I don't know if you're hearing it. I am only hearing my, my answers. I'm not hearing the spirit's answers. Are you experiencing that? It's bizarre. Um, it's a recording. This I'm playing it back. There's no way they can monkey with it. But I'm not hearing the answers from the spirits. Very interesting. Let's try one more here. Hi, spirits. Can you hear us? Yes or no? I think I heard yes. All right. I'm going to stop this share. Oh, there it goes. Now they're playing. Oh, this is bizarre. So they're messing with us because I stopped the sharing and they're still playing. Are you hearing it? Uh, okay. Right now. All right. Let me, uh, all right. If I did or just, I've got the playing of orbs around my dog what? in my house. And every time mm -hmm. I play it back for somebody, the number of orbs is different. So this, this is what I think is a common occurrence. You heard, I heard the first spirit's response with a yay or yes. But then after that, I can only hear your response after that. Yeah, that was that's that was bizarre because again, it's just it's a tape recording. There's nothing like it's not like they're talking now. I like to try it. Can I try it one more time? I'll just do that one. Uh, I closed all the windows. Maybe it might be a memory thing, but I think they were messing with it. They do that. They like me to like to know that they're here. Uh, let's try this last time. Okay. Let me just. I have just put the slideshow back in a window. Okay, got that. Start the show. Okay, let's share it. 
And let's try it sharing now. Okay, sound optimized for video. All right. Hi, spirits. Can you hear us? Yes or no? I think I heard yes. No, they're not doing it. Oh, there we go. All right, you want to introduce ourselves? I'm Carrie Ann. I'm Bob. Yeah. Hi, Anna. How many spirits are with us right now? William Sydney Mount with us? Would be. Is Kane with us? So let's do it. I am. You hear him say I am? Are you happy we're writing your story in the book so people know that you're here? Kane. Anybody familiar with the area? All right. Well, um, it, you heard some of it. It's they're really clear. And um, Angela, I'm going to give you the, my website too again, and uh, you can go and listen to some of these. They're they're free. You just go right to my website and just click on um, Spirit Voices, and there's there's a ton of them up there, so you can enjoy that. Just listen to them with a headset on or a good speaker, because sometimes uh, the computer sound, you lose a little of the frequencies, but they're there. Anyway, thank you for letting me share those. No problem. Let me share your website again with everybody. If everybody can see it, it's down on the bottom, joemediumpi.com. And uh, Joe, uh, again, you list on your website all of your offerings as far as investigations, <laughs> events, speaking engagements. Um, so they can go to this website also to learn where to get in contact with you and to see you in your next event. Am I correct? Yes, they could go. There's uh, just click on the contact me tab and then you could send a request. You could write in there what you're interested in and then I'll contact you directly and um, see if if there's something you'd like to, uh, I am in the New York area. So if you're in different parts of the country, um, you know, I will have virtual events as well, workshops online. Um, we also do things that, you know, get shared on YouTube. Uh, all our book signings where we talk about the spirits and our different adventures are also on YouTube. So if anyone has any questions where they could find that, I could get them a link for that. And the last question if you have any advice for anybody wanting to start paranormal investigation, where do they start? Sure, sure. Great question. Um, well, first, uh, I want to say that being a psychic medium and a paranormal investigator, it's kind of a strange combination because it, you come from the same goal, but you come from different angles. So uh, with, I would say the first thing you want to do is do some research, find out what interests you. Um, if you're interested in old historic homes that are haunted, do some research on that. Find out what things you'd like to learn about, and what you'd be involved in. And then join, the second thing would be join a good organization. Uh, there's so many out there. As you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of organizations, a lot of scientific communities. There's forums. There's uh, bulletin board chat rooms where you could talk to like-minded people. I mean, that's what I would do. I would get in with a group of people. And make sure that whatever you do, you're getting in with a group of people that are in the love and light. That Because the spirit world, what I've found is that, as you guys know, um, it's all about energy and they mirror our energy. So if you approach the spirit world where you're looking for excitement and tribulation and kind of crazy things, you're going to get that. So you want to keep grounded and you want to remember who the big guy is up there, or the big gal, you know, just, uh, just make sure you... You, you know, you keep your priorities right because the spirit world is huge. There's a lot of energy out there and you want to, you want to do it professionally in, in a, a sense where you maintain control of your own emotions, your life. So, um, so yeah, but uh, pick something you like and it's so specialized right now. There's so many different 
modalities that you can get involved with. So I would pick something and then find an organization, join it, learn about it, find out how to do things the right way, and then go for it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm going to share the screen one more time. And again, we're going to end this talk with just thanking Joe and, and thank you so much for sharing everything with us. We enjoyed this talk. Well, thank I, you all I, for coming today. Sarah. We would <laughs> love to have you back someday, Joe. So definitely uh, consider that on your radar. And I want to yep. thank everybody for attending today and uh, we'll see you in March. Thank you, everyone.